Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be studying about frequency division multiplexing. So we started with the topic of uh, multiplexing in the previous video and we studied that there are three kinds of multiplexing. So the first of this kind is frequency division multiplexing. Now what happens in this is that for each sender and its corresponding modulating signal that is received from the sender, we will have one carrier frequency to change the modulating signal and then transmit is as transmit it as a composite signal on the link having a higher bandwidth okay so i'll explain this again suppose there are four different senders each of those senders will generate one signal that they have to send across the channel or across the link which has the higher bandwidth okay so now what will we do in frequency division multiplexing is for each of the four modulating signals that are generated by these senders we will have four carrier frequencies one carrier frequency corresponding to each modulating signal and then these carrier frequencies will carry the original information present in the signal that was sent by the senders and then these uh, carrier frequencies will be combined into a composite signal so the modulated signal now when i say modulated that means the original carrier frequency has been used and the modulating the original single the original signal generated by the sender has been represented on this carrier frequency okay so the resulting signal is called modulated signals okay so the modulated signals are then combined together into a single composite signal and this is the composite signal that will be sent across the link so this concept will be clear to you when i explain it using the diagram so suppose we have the first modulating signal which is received from sender 1 okay so this is a modulated modulating signal uh, 1 this is modulating signal 2 and this is modulating signal 3 okay all of these are analog signals and these are carrier frequencies one carrier frequency corresponding to each of the modulating signal so we have three different carrier frequencies now using the carrier frequencies we will represent this analog signal into this frequency using analog to analog conversion that we have seen in the previous videos okay now this is the resulting modulated signal okay i hope i do not mispronounce it again so this is the modulated signal right and similarly this is modulated signal 2 and this is modulated signal 3 all right so we have achieved three modulated signals corresponding to the three original modulating signals using the three carrier frequencies now what happens is that all these three modulating signals are combined using a multiplexer and they are sent as a single composite signal single composite signal using the link okay and this is the link that originally had a higher bandwidth which was being less underutilized okay or less utilized now since we are sending a composite signal the bandwidth of this link will be better utilized and now what is happening is this signal will then trans be transmitted over the link and at the receiver end so all this process was happening at the sender end now this is the process of transmission this is the resulting composite signal which is sent on the link now at the sender end firstly there will be three filters why three because or there were three original signals so what is the role of filters filters will separate the modulated signals from this composite signals okay so the filters will get three different modulated signals please be careful here 
that the filters will not give you original signals no the filters will give you modulated signals and then each of these modulated signals let me write it here this was md1 this was md2 and this will be md3 right each of these modulated signals will then be sent further to the demultiplexer so that the uh, this particular uh, carrier frequency can be separated from the original signal and that is when you will get the original signal back so the three original signals will be uh, obtained finally and they will be sent to their respective receiving devices okay so two main points two remaining points that you need to understand in frequency division multiplexing is that frequency division multiplexing is an analog multiplexing technique now analog basically means that the sending uh, devices must generate analog information digital information if it has to be transmitted using frequency division multiplexing then it must be first converted into an analog signal and that also we have studied how to send digital data using analog carrier frequencies the different techniques that we have studied you can refer to our playlist for those also but uh, frequency division multiplexing will work with analog signals only they can be directly generated by the sender or they can be first converted from digital data to analog signals and then can be used another important point is the point of guard bands now guard bands are basically uh, they are the parts of the unused bandwidth of the link okay uh, they are the unused strips or portions of the bandwidth of the link okay so the bandwidth of the link contains some parts which remain unused and these uh, unused portions are known as guard bands why they are known as guards because guards save us from something okay similarly these guard bands save or prevent the overlapping of signal okay so to prevent signal overlapping Com different signals are getting transmitted so to prevent signal overlapping we use these guard bands now you can imagine something like this if this is a link these are three parts which are the three portions of the bandwidth that are being utilized so the gaps the unused parts of the bandwidth can be said as the guard bands this part and the unused portion in between these two bands is also a guard band okay now coming to another example of frequency division multiplexing so let us suppose that we have a link which has the bandwidth of say 12 kilohertz and we have three voice channels or three uh, lines which want to transmit voice each having a bandwidth or each needing a bandwidth of 4 kilohertz okay so now if we use only a single sender to send voice on this link so then only 4 kilohertz of bandwidth will be used the remaining will be unused bandwidth that means bandwidth would get wasted so what we do we perform multiplexing so here is an example here is the first voice uh, data that is being sent now this voice information li is lying in the range of 0 to 4 kilohertz each of these three senders this is sender 1 that is sending data then this is sender 2 and this is sender 3 now each of these senders is generating voice data in the range of 4 0 to 4 kilohertz now since each uh, each of these data are in the same range so we cannot directly transmit them we need to change their ranges that is what the entire need of multiplexing is we need to change uh, the range so that uh, the bandwidth is better utilized okay and uh, 
here we need to change the range uh, also because all these signals can get garbled up so what we do we uh, shift these original ranges in the range of 20 to 24 because the link has the bandwidth in the range of 20 to 32 kilohertz and the original voice act is actually transmitted in or generated in 0 to 4 kilohertz so we want to transmit all these three data but we have to shift this data in this bandwidth which is 20 to 32 kilohertz since there are three senders and each uses 4 kilohertz so 3 into 4 will make us uh, 12 kilohertz completely utilizing our channel bandwidth okay so we have to transmit data in the range 20 to 32 so we start at 20 we uh, shift the original freak the data which was 0 to 4 kilohertz into 20 to 24 kilohertz range then we shift the second voice signal in the range of 24 to 28 kilohertz and the third in the range of 28 to 32 kilohertz then each of these uh, voice information or voice data is combined together and sent across the channel so here the channel has a bandwidth of 20 to 20 32 kilohertz which is maintained and each of these three uh, messages are being sent so this is voice message one voice message two and voice message three so both are purposes are getting fulfilled the channel bandwidth is being utilized and all our signals are also being sent in a way that when they reach at the receiver firstly each of the filters would divide them into their corresponding modulated signals these are the modulated signals because they are not original signals the original ones lied in the range of 0 to 4 so these are the modulated signals which have been given by filter 1 filter 2 and filter 3 now these modulated signals will go through d multiplexer which will give you the original message such that each of these messages voice messages will now lie in their original range of 0 to 4 kilohertz okay now coming to the a question which is about guard bands and uh, what this question says is that suppose you have five channels such that each of these channels require uh, 100 kilohertz bandwidth okay also uh, there uh, there also is a need for guard bands separating each of these five channels so we have to tell what should be the minimum bandwidth of this link which is good enough to send or to uh, pass use these channels and pass information okay so basically what we have is we have five channels such that each channel's bandwidth is 100 kilohertz so basically how much bandwidth we need here 5 into 100 kilohertz which gives us 500 kilohertz but at the same time we also require guard bands between each of the five uh, channels since five channels will require four guard bands between them so let us say if this is one channel this is the second third fourth and fifth so you only require four guard bands to separate five channels okay so this is guard band one this is guard band two guard band three and guard band 4 so how many guard bands you require you require 4 into 10 kilohertz which give you 40 kilohertz of bandwidth so the minimum bandwidth required for the link to transmit uh, signals in this range is minimum bandwidth would be the sum of the two which is 500 plus 40 which will give you 540 kilohertz okay so this is how you perform the calculation for such question so you have to be very careful in calculating how many uh, separating bands you will require between different channels 
now uh, at last one thing that you must remember is that frequency division multiplexing finds its application in the fm and am radios that we use uh, in homes in your mobile phones and so on okay am and fm radios are using uh, these frequency division multiplexing because again the uh, all the channels are transmitting signals but there is a single link that will be carrying all those signals and this mechanism is required so that all the original signals generated by these radio channels are sent through the link and are also received correctly at the receiver end such that the link is completely utilized so uh, this was all about frequency division multiplexing in the next video we will be studying about wavelength division multiplexing thank you for watching if you understood the concept please give us a like share with your friends and also subscribe to the channel till we meet in the next video mind your exam